Hey, everybody, it's your boy, Eduardo Jackson, CEO, founder, creator of the Cinema Draft Game and CD3D, back for another week of AMA Wednesday. Welcome. So, this might be another short one because a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on that I can't really talk about just yet. But let's talk about the stuff that's in front of the scenes, which I know obsesses with most of you all, and that is the token price. Token price slightly up, about 2.267 cents. And this must be because... Looks like uh, we've got green numbers again. Oh, Binance coin. Looks like it's making a move. Last time I checked in on it, it was just under 300. Now it's at 332. Of course, our largest uh, pair is with uh, BNB. So it makes sense that if Binance is up, so is our temporary token price for CD3D. Under our FAQ, not a lot going on as far as our proof and lock and burn stuff. I don't think we have another liquidity event until June. That's right, June 13th. Everything else seems to be locked and tidied away. If you've been following, oh, wrong twit, Twitter. There you go. If you've been following our tweets, you may have noticed that we are promoting the the beginning of Stranger Things season four coming on Friday. Hashtag drafting soon, as well as Obi Wan Kenobi. This I cannot wait for. This is the type of limited event series that five and eight and 10 year old me would have just lost his shit over. looks really cool. I can't wait. I guess we're dropping two episodes on Disney plus in America. So enjoy it while it comes out. And so these are our two latest uh, drafting soon cards. You might've seen them in telegram as well. And I'm trying to think of what I can materially tell you up uh, up front. I mean, there's, I mean, oh my, I I swear, we're getting so close to something that I can tell you about, but I can't quite tell you about it yet. But we are diligently working on all of our stuff. C3 Dex is looking pretty, pretty good. Um, We're testing, uh, we're in the testing phase right now um, and making sure the final pages of the Dex launch pad are connected. Hmm. Can I show you guys a sneak peek? No, I can't. I can't do it. Can't do it. All right. Well, let's do this though. Let's do this. Let's check in on Mel Rob's staking on our good friends over at Unifarms staking cohort. Oh, app actually should be app. Not uniform. There we go. My stakes. All right. And is Mel Rob plugged in? She is plugged in. So I believe we parked about 15, 14,000 there, right? So let's click for refresh. Come on. Earn my stakes. There we go. Seriously, are we not connected? Hold on. There we go. All right. Worry about that. Okay, 16,000 total value locked. Fort and we staked 14,039.16. And oh, shit. Wow. So we already have 1,100. Uh, CD3D after what's been two weeks, and then we've got 1800 almost 1900 uniform. Oh, and this week we started staking Canu, Canu, Canumo, Canumo. Yes, 
So then by this time next week and next week's AMA Wednesday, we shall be staking all four. All right, that's exciting. Now we're getting some bang for our staking buck. This is very cool. Still 154 days left. Still good seats available. As we go over to the general cohort. No. All farms. Here we go. We're actually third in in staking amount. So we got to step it up. 15% Unifarm, 12% Safle, and then 7% us. So if you have tokens and you're out there, I know you are, and you're waiting on on our stuff to drop and you really want to earn some passive rewards for your tokens, let's park them on Unifarm. You see how it's going down. You see, I'm getting, I'm, I've staked one, I'm getting three. Pretty exciting stuff. So, Mel Rob, she's making out like a bandit, this time with three, uh, with uh, two new tokens. Actually, what is Unifarm trading for? Okay, Unifarm. All right, so po- basically 0.4 cents. Okay. Not bad. Pretty, pretty good. All right, so. That pretty much, I think that ends the formal information part of AMA Wednesday. Another shockingly short part. And at this point, I shall open it up to your questions. Community, how at your boy. Hola. Oh, hold on a second. I think I do hear Aisha. She's kind of faint. Let me turn this up and maybe turn the music down. Is that you, Aisha? All right, hold on one second. Let me turn this down to Scotch. Okay, all right. Yeah, what's going on, Aisha? Welcome back to AMA Wednesday. Oh, well, we appreciate it. So what's on your mind this week, Aisha? Okay. As you know, I have been, you know, every time they have like one of their voice text AMA for anything that I am in for our tech, I've been able to do it. I have been looking at it, checking it out, and I've been some promising projects. Yeah, there are some interesting projects. Good. Uh, I'm sorry, Aisha. I, I can barely hear you. I've got my volume jacked all the way up. Can you lean into your mic just a little bit? There we go. Oh, That's better. Okay. So, I, but like I said, I just felt what I was saying is that I was... I had I checked, I had, I checked my, my, you know, my little my little cash cash uh, 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 and and I because I've staked pretty much day two. Okay. And I was able to get it so I was able to get it on day two. Okay. So right now I'm earning all I'm earning I'm earning everything. Oh, are you earning all four already? I'm earning all four already. Wow, look at you. It is very exciting. It is very exciting. I'm looking like you to be and, and projects, projects seem, seem very promising. I've been, I've been on the AMAs, the voice text, the voice text AMAs, AMAs for the projects. They've okay. They've had them for so far. And, and what I've learned about, about, about the projects, you know, half of them I don't remember. You know, I get, I'm, I'm excited that you picked this, this particular, this particular uh, uh, method, of method of staking. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, well, so, you know, sometimes you stumble into, you know, sometimes it's fate, sometimes you, you get lucky, and I think this is a combination of of both. But yeah, I, I like their their model. Um, you know, it's a fairly big, vibrant community. Um, I think they asked, um, I think they asked my opinion on for some article they were writing on the state of the metaverse stuff. So they try to engage, you know, their cohort creators as well. So yeah, it's, it, I dig it. We had a pretty lively AMA ourse- uh, ourselves uh, with the the voice note thing, which you know my first time using it, but uh, it worked out uh, pretty well. So, so yeah, it's a very interesting platform that I'm expecting big things from. Speaking of voice note, 
I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh, you 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 mean just you mean just like in leaving um, messages and stuff, right? In, so, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, besides the the stuff that we've got going on, I mean, yeah, that's part of the the attraction to the Unifarm platform is that in in sharing be, or in being part of what was it, like a, a ten thousand plus uh, creator community or whatever. What, what's their their deal? Um, ten hundred million value, you know, total value locked. I mean, you know, it's just you're part of a bigger community that has a chance to kind of discover your token as well, and you know, they do a decent job of marketing to their already established uh, a clientele and we might even you know get some spillover from whatever the, their next cohort is you know we'll be right underneath the, the next one so this yeah see you know stake now cohort, cohort 37 is live uh we've got our own little ads uh starting to to run about i think maybe once or twice weekly uh this just remind people that they can stake their stuff so yeah we'll, we'll see how it turns out as you know, as you know, I don't work with the CB3, but I'm going to but I'm going to tell you this is wide this open. It's wide open. It's not too late. 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 It's not too Pick up a token, and then, and then from that point, from that on, point on, what's your stake? What's your gaining? What's your earning all for token? At, uh, at uh, the same time, it goes it on, goes on until, until the end of staking. It's the staking ends. And what is that? Staking ends October twenty second. Uh, October twenty sixth, I believe. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, October twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. October twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so yeah. So you've got some time, but the sooner you get in, the better. AJ stream. Yeah, that's right. The, yeah. So we, um, so yeah, so your boy got, got a last minute call up, uh, on a, an acquaintance's show. She works at, um, at Al Jazeera us over in DC and was it on publicity. Yes. Yeah, in the publicity list. And, um, she had, you know, they were talking about crypto. Last time they brought me on to talk crypto, might have been three, four years ago, whatever. I actually gave her crypto like a long time ago. And she, you know, said that she left on Coinbase and just forgot about it. And then Coinbase clawed it back. <laughs> but no, it was an interesting discussion because, you know, we had the, the editor in chief of the Decrypt magazine. I'm not sure if you guys get that, but I get the, their newsletter, uh, about, six times a week. Uh, so it's kind of cool to meet the face behind that. And then there's some sort of crypto skeptic. I uh, can't remember his name. It doesn't matter because he sucked. And then there was me, your boy, wearing CD3D on camera and trying to represent for the crypto people. And it was a fairly, you know, a balanced discussion, somewhat nuanced. The crypto skeptic, I mean, it's weird. He actually used to own you know, Bitcoin. He used to have like a cacaceous coin or whatever, and he's just he's just a disillusioned, disaffected uh, uh, former holder or whatever. But it was a good discussion because we were able to because obviously they want to talk about oh the crypto crash and stuff, and and of course Luna is just you know I'm actually a little bit surprised at how big a story Luna is uh, generally. I mean, yes, I mean they burned through 
three billion dollars worth of of uh, Bitcoin to try to save their peg, and once it destabilized, I mean, it just went down to zero. And so I thought it'd be just big news in our community. But I was really a little bit surprised at how much of a bigger story it was to the financial community at large. Almost like they were waiting for you know another big you know um, they like to call them black swan event to just kind of you know point a finger at, at crypto when. I mean, it kind of was an isolated incident. I mean, it was basically, I mean, the entire tech sector was down, has has been down all month. I mean, you know, people are complaining about the S&P and interest rates are going up. And, you know, and I mean, you know, actual established companies like Target are losing 25% of their value after earnings call. So, I mean, I just think that people are unfairly, you know, picking on crypto again because they fear what they do not understand. But it was kind of fun to get on on the panel and mix it up a little bit and ha- and just kind of go back and forth between the three of us. Well, I, I always like I always love the any opportunity I can I can get to point out the Ponzi scheme that is Wall Street because so the crypto skeptic guy kept calling you know Bitcoin and and crypto at large a Ponzi scheme and he's rattling off all this you know nonsense and I just kind of and I, it, it took me everything for me not to roll my eyes because I'm like look the greatest you know Ponzi scheme is Wall Street I mean these guys I mean any anytime you see a ticker price that price never existed because it was never available I mean that the, the Wall Street is so front run by high frequency uh, trade and uh, not to sound like some guy that tinfoil hat i've actually like read you know uh, a, a book and articles about this type of stuff they've got these computers that that work uh, at the speed of milliseconds that essentially front run the market so anytime you see like whatever the value of a stock whatever is that price doesn't exist right now i mean maybe existed for a fraction of a, of a millisecond but it, it's not you know, the actual price because the whole market is being front run by these super fast computers that are using, you know, high, uh, high speed fiber optic wires, you know, to get from place to place, just, you know, milliseconds ahead of, of a ne- next order just to make, a, you know, that much uh, more advantage in the market. So, I'll, and and then the fact that, you know, and I brought the fact that when we had the Great Recession, it, you know, it was because Wall Street were some damn cowboys, lost half of the draft moms, you know, AT&T pension, and then they got paid, then the big banks got paid out 100 cents on the dollar, you know, to quote unquote, save our economy that they wrecked. I mean, it's just nonsense. So that's why I like crypto uh, t- generally and, you know, Bitcoin specifically because you can't, you know, you can't just, you know, print more of it willy-nilly it's on a schedule it's you know you can't shake it off its schedule uh it's you know fairly fairly decentralized you know it's the hardest of hard money i mean it's not you can't just print more dollars like and that's why we're having this inflation right now and it's funny because we all needed that that you know quote unquote free cash like a year or two ago for the pandemic and everyone kind of mentioned that inflation would be you know an after effect but we need to spend that money then and now we've got the after effects of inflation that's why people when they wake up will realize that you know a good hedge against inflation is something like bitcoin where you can't manipulate like him us dollar you know Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm paying off warlords and and yeah. Yeah. Ugh, why? <laughs> oh man. I can say some big numbers and odd numbers and orders of 10 and stuff like that. But you know, as an adult, I bet you're hit at parties. <laughs> I can do pie to the 25th place. <laughs> Anyway, anyways, uh, our our former actuarian, uh, you were saying. Oh yes, it's, oh, yes, it's, it's really, it's um, really um, so, so a lot of things are being pointed at, at we the people, we the people who, 
who were caught up in the Right. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I just, I just get really, well, not really, but I, I get a little annoyed and defensive when I hear people just, you know, taking, you know, uninformed pot shots at crypto. Do, does crypto need more, better regulation? Sure. You know, I mean, or, or, even, well, I wouldn't say enforcing the regulation we have because it's even that's kind of ill formed and ill suited. But I mean, more regulation is on its way. I mean, we can't, you know, fight that. But, you know, we just want to, we just can only hope that it's going to be smart and still have like a degree of, of innovative freedom because that's what we, we lack in this country when it comes to crypto. And that's what, you know, there's been a, a brain drain to other countries because, you know, our, our areas are so great. There's a lot of stuff as an American citizen you can't participate in, in crypto. That's kind of cool, you know, <clears throat> that, you know, the certain exchanges or, or uh, ICOs, whatever they're, they're popping that you just can't take part in because they want to deal with the headache that is the U.S. So one of these days we'll get our act together. <clears throat> and I think, you know, it might be somewhere in the middle between, you know, too much regulation and not enough. Um, as far as, you know, the Biden administration putting out that executive order saying that they want to study and possibly develop a, a stable coin stuff. I mean, you know, the government's going to do what the government's going to do. We'll be over here building as usual. We'll have our stuff out. We'll have draft stream up and running. We'll have C3 decks up and running. We'll have our stealth project up and running. You know, we won't be too bothered by it. But I think once you get like a, a U.S. like a U.S. backed backed state like a u.s government backed stable coin you might actually see the market even take off even higher okay Oh, um, it's an interesting feature. It, did, did we have that on Dodo? Oh, I see. Oh, you as a, as a whale, you like seeing that stuff, huh? <laughs> Yeah, which is okay, which is what some people call whales. Um, inter you know, actually, I don't think – I'm, I'm checking our specs right now. Let me take a look and see. Uh... Hmm. Oh, on Unifarm? Yeah. Oh, that yeah, that sounds like a. I mean, yeah, that might be something you might want to bring up in their Telegram to see if they might want because that sounds like that's a UI issue. Yeah, that they don't have yet. So maybe you might. See. Yeah. Thank you. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, actually, well, no, I'm, I'm actually trying to make a note on the, on, on the design about your, um, what we should be showing here. I'm trying, I'm trying to multitask right now live while recording to make a note about your, um, asking about like percentage. Exactly. Cause I saw we were testing staking, um, late last week and it does not tell you a percentage but i do think that's a cool um feature so we should probably see if we can squeeze that in um yeah well i mean i mean it's you know, most people i mean it's something that they probably didn't think of um well i mean well we didn't think of it uh when, when we were doing it so that's that's a, it's a, like i said it's nice anything like that has more information and if it doesn't cost us much of anything, then yeah, we might as well throw it in there. So, so yeah, I want to make a note of that. We should be trying to do it right. Well, let me come back to that one. So, let's see, staking ties, staking dress token stake. Um, yeah, we should probably show a percentage. Let me make a note on uh, here. Uh, we should show a what the user's percentage of the pool state is as well. Let's move these columns to accommodate. Please. Okay, yeah, that'll work. That will work. See, see, see that community. See that people watching at home. This is how this is how you go from uh, from community feedback into a into a product feature, right all on the air. Damn it! <laughs> well, I kind of feel like uh, what was that that uh, Chris Rock thing. Uh, thing where he's like, people want people always want credit for shit they're supposed to do. <laughs> so thank you, but you know it's my job. You know I need to. You know, we are community driven at this point. You guys have been holding for a, a while, waiting, expecting big things. I'm expecting big things, so it only behooves me to listen to the community and where it makes sense. You know, uh, uh, take their suggestions and and act accordingly. So I appreciate the the product feature. If I was a staker, I would like to know what my, my percentage of, my, of the pool is. So yeah, let's do that. Hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. And I and I'll just uh, covering what what's been in the chat. Someone asked when start decks and game, which is a very you know valid question. I said we're real close, most likely next month. Um, more uh, the decks is coming before the game at this point, uh, which is wild to me. Um, the, the we're 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 still working on the game. Everything's still working. I actually did a talent pool uh, for this past week. We have some issues with scoring. Uh, with translating the scoring from real life to whatever. But actually, you know what? This might be fun for you guys. Let me show you how stuff kind of shook out anyways. Um, so, the, yeah, so the 10, so, so the 10 sh uh, uh, shows or movies that we had this week, uh, a perfect pairing on Netflix, Angeline, this miniseries de debuted. This one might be a little too niche for anyone, but if you live in LA at any stretch in time in the aughts, you'd have seen one of these billboards for, for this Angel, this mysterious Angeline person. Well, they made uh, a mini series about her starring Emily Ross, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, Bang Bang Baby, a foreign drama on Prime, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, you know, the the, the big Disney Plus streaming animated adventure, Kingdom Business, which I'd never heard of before, but now I'm intrigued. So let's check out Kingdom Business real quick. Because uh, as I was, as I was t telling someone in... I was responding to a comment in uh, chat about uh, uh, someone was saying, oh, I was scrolling Netflix about half an hour ago and couldn't decide what to find. And I, and, I'm, and I said, well, the best thing about DraftStream after we debut is that it will be a great curator of content that's out there. 
uh, letting you know about shows and movies you never would have heard of that may pique your interest. And I, I've been saying this for about maybe three years now, that if the the teens, the, the, the 2010s were all, you know, were fueled by by data collection, then the 20s will be fueled by data curation. So now that we've got all this data that people, you know, had a big data arms race between like the Facebooks and 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 the Twitters and the Googles of the world, you know, is the data, 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 gather, 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 you know, find out your marketing preferences, sell it, all sorts of stuff. I think the 20s is going to be about curation. Now we've got all this data, what the hell do we do with it? You know, or now that we're inundated with, you know, 20 streaming services, how do I find, you know, the shows I absolutely want to watch? And and honestly, how do we create buzzworthy shows that, you know, actually, you know, are in the cultural zeitgeist? And And I mean, to what degree I can't, you know, foresee but i think cinema draft will be in the conversation for helping curate a lot of what's out there when you have 40 50 titles a week in your talent pool com- can creating a, a fairly um a complex layer of game theory and and also fun for people to compete for fun and prizes and also to earn more cd 3d you know you're going to end up learning a lot about these different shows for, so for example kingdom business knew nothing about it and then and then i got its scores and so partially because they knew nothing about it in the talent pool. It is actually score. uh, It's actually valued fairly low. It's on BT plus, uh, which I don't know anyone who really has BT plus. So um, I, I, do you have it? Do you have VT plus you? Okay. So yeah. So then, and then, so, you know, it's almost like they're almost min, min, uh, min values. 5,500 is your headliner. And, turns out this is the biggest value of the weekend because it ends up being well shit it's our highest score oh my lord it's kingdom business is was was our highest score of the weekend with the cheapest price that type of value is hard to beat so another t- who what oh which one oh um right you mean oh rotten tomatoes right here yeah so this is a default score uh, um, you get default scores when uh, when we can't find a score for the title or, or the program. Um, the default scores for Rotten Tomatoes is 52, and the default score for Metacritic is 66. But this just shows you the power of the audience vote, because even though critics didn't bother to cover it, the audiences who saw it gave it 100% on Google user search and 8.9 on IMDb, and that alone negated... The, the critic scores because we do give so in the formula and if you're into oh little miss math major here's our our formula no it's not like you know the kfc secret herbs and spices it's just you know very basic math form that shows you that we give 60 percent weighting to an average of the google user and the imdb user score before you average it in with the rotten tomatoes critics and the metacritic critic scores and it just sh- goes to show you the the strength the strength of the audience scores and why, well, yes, it's good to know if critics, if something's critically acclaimed, you need to know if it's going to be audience acclaimed. And so the, and that you kind of see this a little bit too with, with uh black oriented shows. I mean, I mean, Tyler Perry still has his allegiance. I don't understand it. Um, it, it but because he's Tyler Perry, his stuff t- t- kind of gets covered. So his critical scores will probably, would probably be lower than, than these, uh, def- default scores. But when you have audience scores, something like on, like on, on a, a BT, a BT plus, or like those lifetime movies that they have, you know, a fairly rabid, uh, uh, but niche audience base. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to score it higher than the critics would. So all that kind of plays a little bit into the strategy. And, and, and as we get closer to the launch of the game, you know, I'll fire back up the old Cinema Draft pod. We'll have our strategy sessions. We'll bring back some of our old favorites. Jay Devlin, uh, my boy, the, the tripod, uh, you know, all the old favorites people used to watch the, the show. And we'll have some, you know, strategy breakdowns of, you know, best practices. You know, I'll, I'll do my, my Monday morning quarterbacking after the week's games are done and the final scores are out. And then we have the new talent pool. I'll do the, the, the weekend preview after, you know, call sheets have locked and the game has begun on Thursday nights. And then I'll do the Saturday updates as well, where I kind of give a middle of the race update to see, you know, you know, how, how the, the landscape shaking out, what's scoring, what, and who's temporarily in the lead. So there's a lot of good strategy and game theory in this in this game, but like I said, most importantly, expose you to stuff that you didn't know that you might have liked or wanted to see. And on the strength of these audience scores, 
I'm not checking a kingdom business, like for real. <laughs> An exotic dancer with a powerful voice rises from the pole to the pole pit, forcing the reigning queen of gospel to guard her family and its many secrets. Sounds like some drama. And honestly, and, and P Valley isn't back yet, so I think I might need a, a pole dance show for now. <laughs> oh, Have you seen P Valley? It, it's on stars. It, first of all, they are athletes. I mean, professional athletes. The core strength, the I mean, the the, the athleticism, the acrobatics. My goodness, yeah. No, they're it, it, it's pretty impressive. It's a very impressive show, technically, physically, and then there's some really there's some there's some uh, some great A drama, like for real. They're the it's ba it's about a, a strip club down like in a nondescript. Uh, town in the south, like some generic town in the south, and like this mysterious stranger comes in, no real pole experience. You know, he's kind of learns on the job how to how to uh, work the pole, and then all the little dramas are going on inside the club and outside the club, kind of spill in, and it's all kind of herded over by. Um, I mean, he's not a transsexual, so I guess he's I guess he's uh, not quite a drag queen either, but um, uh, I, I guess he's. Uh, Gender fluid. There we go. Gender fluid. Um, uh, prom promoter, organized club owner named Uncle Clifford. All, I mean, that dude is fabulous. Like, always got on like some really fabulous like makeup and hair did, and you know, it's kind of swans around the whole place. So it's all under the, uh, the careful eye of Uncle Clifford, who's you know a bit of a shady lady himself. So I don't know. It's very, it's a very interesting show. Check it out. It's on Stars. All ten episodes or twelve episodes, I think, are up from last season. I think it comes back sometime in July. P Valley. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> no, it stands for pussy. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> And actually, it's based off of a play, which I think was called Pussy Valley, um, uh, by um, the. So this show was was based off of a off Broadway play um, that the Katori, Katori Johnson, Katori something. She 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 also adapted for the screen. She's the she's the showrunner, and it's just a great show. I really enjoy it. Yeah, there it is, P Valley. Yeah. There we go. I mean, look at this, look at this key art, man. Look at this key art. Yeah, there goes Uncle Clifford. Told you it was fabulous. That's Uncle Clifford. Yeah, yeah. He got the accent and everything. He's got the accent and everything. Uncle Clifford. Yep. So yeah, so it, down deep in the Mississippi Delta, trap music meets film noir in this kaleidoscopic story of a little strip club that could. And the big characters that come through its doors, the hopeful, the lost, the broken, the ballers, the beautiful, and the damned. Katori Hall, do your thing. What's that? You know, go ahead, Katori. Actually, I think she went to the Yale Drama School and, and she went to Carnegie Mellon. Like, she's got bona fides. She's legit, so... But when you when you hear her in an interview though, she is straight. No, she is straight Memphis, <laughs> straight Delta. So, yeah. Oh, stop, stop. We grown here. We grown folk. But yeah, it's it's, it's a fun show. It's um, uh, check it out, P Valley, and that's another one that when we were in uh, alpha testing last year. Um, it did pretty well for us. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find its score. So in all these call sheet mockups I, I do, I actually do keep a, here it is, master score list. This is the master score list from our alpha test uh, last year. And right now, it's, it's right now it's arranged like, you know, um, by date. If we go do it by name, you can find... Yeah, P Valley should be up in here. And then OP dash. There it is. So P Valley. Yeah, 100.25. So it's opening weekend. The critics all over it. 185. Damn. IMDb. Yeah. Yeah. So IMDb can IMDb user scores can be a funny place, man. I mean, you I mean the, I think the Christian coalition was out for that one. They just were not having it. 
kind of like how how like white men were felt aggrieved when Beyonce's Black as King came out. They had great scores everywhere except for IMDb, and you could just read the comments. It was just like on some racist stuff. It was it was pretty bad, but um, yeah. So it was it was pretty much just these this these guys, and because they're an audience score, it weighs you know sixty percent more. So that helped, would help bring down the overall scores. This one score right here. Look what happens if you change it to like an eight. 113. What the 13 point jump? A max score is 130, which has never happened. Um, and actually, our overall, I think our overall highest score is one, is I think the last dance, 123, maybe. Uh, let's see, what's the actually, that's lowest to highest. Let's go highest to lowest. The highest score we've ever had. Yeah, last dance, 124.15. 100. 94, 91.7. And those are just the scores that got its opening weekend, mind you. So I'm sure if, if they had to rescore by the end of the run, it would have been like hundreds across the board. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's um you didn't hear about the last dance? Yeah, it's on Netflix now too. Yeah, it's 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 the, the Michael Jordan's um final season. The, the like uh, like all this hidden footage that they a ten part miniseries on all this hidden foot footage they had during his last season as a Chicago Bull his last dance. Well, thank you for well, thank you not saying that I have been the basketball, 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 basketball for quite some time. Well, you know you're 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 a math nerd, so I don't know if you're into sports or not. So I can't assume you knew what you did, but it was you know it was a big thing, especially during the pandemic. This was. Um, yeah, this I think it was 2020. I think uh, during the pandemic, um, it was a big event because you know we're all stuck inside. We wanted to watch something, and and it was a it was a bit of a, a culture thing for a while. People were talking about it, so but it was it was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, obviously, I'm a huge basketball fan, um, mild Michael Jordan fan. Hamilton comes in second, 121.80, and that was the first time I saw Hamilton was on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's a sin. Looks like that was in one of the, the later ones. I heard really good stuff about that. I need to watch it. And the Queen's Gambit, which everyone was talking about. The Queen's Gambit. Um, the, the chess prodigy where Anya Taylor-Joy played like a, a, press, a chess, a female chess prodigy in like the Americana 50s. Oh, yeah. Uh, Queen of Cotway. Yeah, we had, we had that during our... Um, our, one of our beta tests for uh, Cinema Draft. And I think it scored pretty well. Yeah. I think it scored pretty well. That, was, that must have been like 2017, 2016, 2017. It was a while ago. Yeah. Infinity Train, Love on the Spectrum. I actually watched it. That was pretty good about um, uh, uh, people on the autistic spectrum dating. Um, the Crown Season 4, awesome. And The Expanse Season 5. Oh, I love The Expanse. I miss The Expanse. Um, sci-fi, uh, futuristic set between a war between Mars, Earth, and the asteroid belt. And then Pen15. And then Dickinson, that rounds out the top 10 in scores. So yeah, so so all this type of data and stuff, uh, we'll figure out a way to make you know some of our previous stuff available so you can kind of get an idea of like what performed, what didn't. Well, I'm sure we'll have our own lists, you know, as we as we debut the game and and go through several weeks and months of gameplay, you'll see you know uh, uh, what performed when and how, what genres you work. I mean, that's one way I like. That's so that's one way I I try to predict um, not only just um, uh, scoring for salaries, but also when I was actually playing. Sometimes I come to the master score list. I just kind of start sorting by by genre. All right, so what is you know what what what's uh what's action doing, you know, and, 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 you know, or, or by platform, some platforms are better than others. What, I mean, you can even tell too. watch. Um, so watch Apple TV plus, right? Well, Apple TV plus 97, 118, 109, 90. I mean, they don't have a score below 86. That's all right. All right here's one little voice. 77.5. They don't have any outright bombs. Tehran. Oh, I've learned about Tehran watching that. That show is like that too. A spy thriller set in the Middle East, uh, an Israeli Mossad agent undercover in Tehran, the, cop the capital of, of Iran, as posing as an Iranian um, 
uh, worker. So yeah, it's very, I mean, you'll find a lot of stuff that you're, that you're interested in and just seeing the quality of Apple TV plus m- mostly hits almost no misses. It's, it's crazy. And, and so there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of strategy that you'll see that's involved in this game. Once you see certain players performing consistently well, you know, you might want to see, you know, figure out like what they're doing best. We'll have like a strategy site, uh, a domain I'm, I've been squatting on for about six years now called dailyfantasymovies.com. We'll, we'll try to get that built out to be like a, a proper, uh, strategy companion site for draft stream and stuff. So yeah, it's going to, it's about beyond and popping, but beyond and popping. Um, I'm not exactly high. You know what? That's actually not. <laughs> I will make it available. Yes. No, that that is not a problem. I I'll be more than happy to to make it available. Um, I'm pretty sure, like around the time uh, we start cranking up the. Uh, the strategy pods again. I'll probably uh, publish or whatever. But yeah, it's 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 not a secret. I've actually uh, posted about it before somewhere. Might even tweet about it. So yeah, it's not it's, it's not proprietary information. I'd I'd be happy to share that with you with you guys. What? <laughs> maybe, honestly, honestly, uh, maybe you maybe you could. We'll we'll have to figure that out. Like right now, we don't have any like provision feature wise to put the master score list in the site, but. That would that would be the type of content material you would find on say dailyfantasymovies.com, you know. <laughs> no, it's not cheating. No, you're just, just getting a leg up. You're trying. Yeah, you're trying to get a leg up. So we, our goal is to be like the Roto Grinders is like Roto Grinders is to the daily fantasy sports community. This is Roto Grinders, which is like arguably like one of the top or, or best sites for um for daily fantasy sports strategy they support DraftKings, uh fan duel all the, yeah you know all these different you know daily fantasy sports sites you click through they've got their own little you know discount code and stuff so they make money through af- affiliate fees as well as you know monthly memberships and stuff because the level of product they put out is so good they put out I don't know, three dozen, you know, daily or weekly podcasts. I mean, they, they go deep into the stats and stuff and, you know, and a lot of the stuff you have to kind of pay for to get like the really deep down stats, but they're, 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 they're about that life. So we're looking to mm-hmm. eventually build out something, you know, not exactly like Rotor Grinders, but supports our game in a similar type of way. This is more fan engagement, player engagement, and we want people. We want people to play and get better. You know, we we, we want like an efficient market. We want people. You know, we want it to come down to to everyone having similar strategies and it coming down to tiebreakers. You know, uh, we want it to ha- have coming down to being just one actor off on your call sheet being the difference between you winning. You know, you know, uh, you know, a hundred thousand C three D and say a thousand C three. You know, we, we want that kind of granular, serious um, game playing going on. I mean, and to the point like where during our beta test we had uh, we had a couple guys who were consistently good. One guy, he was just like a, a semi-pro poker player. He was just kind of naturally gifted at game theory. The other guy, my old poker buddy, who also is a, a, a gifted poker player, he actually used an optimizer. He used like a solver uh, program on uh, Excel to basically he would guess – uh, or aggregate as much of the data that was out there, run it through his solver, and then come up with an optimal um, call sheet and plug in his numbers that way. And it worked really well for him for a long time. So, yeah, this would be big money out there. I, this would be big money. I've got, girl, I've got like 5.6 million uh, CD3D that I, uh, for just for marketing that I'm looking to deploy at least half of over this year. So we're going to have some pretty big prize pools. Um, it's going to be, you know, worth your while. It really is. I am, I am not going to say all I am because I don't have to play with. Yeah, something to play with and also hopefully something to stake on C3 decks as well. So, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to play with Okay. 
spreadsheet. Wait, wait, so, so you want to study the spreadsheet now before you even have an, uh, a test game in, in the tube? Oh, that's right. You're a math. You're a math nerd. That's right. However, spreadsheets are your jam, huh? Okay. All right. And so I'm checking the, so yeah, well, it looks like it's just you and me again, which is more than fine by me. And so I guess I'll just kind of wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for another lively discussion conversation uh, at AMA Wednesdays. I guess this kind of makes up for last week's lackluster one. Oh, I'm sorry. You have, you have a question? Okay. Uh, girl, of course, of course, I like that tweet, and they sent me the six different sabers. What do you think? What do you think I am? A Padawan? No, I'm a Jedi Knight. Damn near Lord of the Sith. I'm about this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll say this though too: the Disney marketing machine has this sucker everywhere. I mean, it definitely helps that that uh, I think ABC, uh, you know, Disney-owned company has the the NBA playoff Eastern Conference uh, finals. So, so they're so pretty much like five times a game you're going to see an Obi Wan Kenobi uh, thing. People are hyped for this. People are like legitimately excited about this. I can't wait. I'm going to watch. I mean, what's it? Two episode premieres, so it's two hours. So at 12.01 a.m. On, on late Thursday night, early Friday morning, I'll be up. I'll be watching. Yeah, yeah, I got the I got the the Hulu bundle, um, and I'm and I'm shocked I'm shocked at how well Hulu knows me. I've been watching all sorts of movies and shows I had no idea existed. Kind of like they've been curating it for me. Kind of like DraftStream is going to curate it for you. I was kind of shocked at how well Hulu knows my taste. But um, but I'm so I'm kept I've kept the Hulu bundle. That's like Hulu, ESPN Plus, and Disney all for about commercial free. I can't do commercials for about twenty two bucks a month. And I'm like, all right, you know, fine by me. It's three bucks or two bucks more than my Netflix, whatever, you know, let's, let's roll. That's another thing too. Stranger Things. I'm all about that Stranger Things life too, but they have to take a backseat to Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is my childhood we're talking about here. This is my childhood. I was told, I was told my dad took me to see Star Wars when I was like two years old. Of course, I don't remember a damn thing, but like that's how ingrained this is and how and I used to have Star Wars bed sheets for like a decade. About that. You know, I have been I have now begging for like R2 D2 um underwear. I had though I had I had um, a Millennium Falcon um like action figure toy thing or whatever, like the like like a, a, a model scale of the Millennium Falcon they used to sell from like uh Kenner or Hasbro or whatever. Oh man, it was it was on. <laughs> it was on. No, nah, I was not, nah. I mean, I, I just played with the action figures and stuff, so that was good enough for me. But yeah, but let, you know, not to derail this into like you know uh, Star Wars con or whatever. But but yeah, so Obi Wan Kenobi is gonna be is, is gonna be is gonna be the jam. Uh, you know, maybe we can maybe if if it uh, <clears throat> really promotes a lot of discussion, we have some some extra time we can talk about it next week. But I but thank you for for reminding us that's gonna be you know something I'm, I'm gonna be talking and tweeting about. And thank you all for listening and watching later. Uh, AMA Wednesday. We do this every Wednesday, 2 a.m. Pacific time <laughs> over here in on the on the west side of the United States. 
9 a.m. UTC GMT for the rest of the world. Thanks, everybody, for watching, for listening, for participating, for hobbling, for being part of our great CD3D community. I'll see you all next week.